Coming into this course, you really needed um, at least a basics in uh, trigonometry. You need to um, be able to understand what the trigonometric functions are and uh, be able to apply them, especially when we get to the section on vectors. So trigonometry is really based mostly on the elements of a right triangle and uh, you know, somewhat incorporating that into uh, a circle, but most trigonometric functions allow us to compare the uh, different properties of a right triangle to one another. Uh, in terms of what we use, we're, we're basically uh, sticking with sine, cosine, and tangent. There are a lot of other um, trigonometric functions that, that I have never even used. Um, you know, the secant, cosecant, you probably learned that in trigonometry. Um, of course, there are also the inverse trigonometric functions that you need to know. But again, sine, cosine, tangent, those are the really important ones that, that we're going to need for vectors. Um, you also should uh, know the Pythagorean theorem. I always laugh at this because long before Pythagoras, the Egyptians and Babylonians knew about this. It's called the Pythagorean Theorem because supposedly Pythagoras uh, came up with the proof that it was correct. But again, uh, in order to square up the pyramids, the Egyptians actually used this. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. The opposite side plus the adjacent side. Uh, the, the opposite side squared plus the adjacent side squared is equal to the hypotenuse squared. So again, here's a right triangle. This is very, very important. Again, just doing the very simplest trigonometry. We often will call one side A, one side B, one side C, but those letters aren't necessarily um, reserved for, for those all the time. Um, typically, the angle of interest is called theta. Uh, the other angle, other than the 90 degree angle, is sometimes called phi. And of course, if we're looking at a, at a triangle, all the angles have to add up to be equal to 180. If 90 degrees is already used, that means that theta and phi have to be equal to 90. So right triangle. Um, again, opposite adjacent hypotenuse, the angle theta, these are all terms that we're going to use quite a bit. And um, in terms of just the basic relationships, here's the Pythagorean theorem. Here's the definition of sine, cosine, and tangent. Okay? When you do the vectors lab, you'll actually do quite a bit of work with them. All right? Sine is opposite divided by the hypotenuse. Cosine is the adjacent length divided by the length of the hypotenuse. Then tangent of the angle is the opposite divided by the adjacent. We also know that tangent theta is equal to sine divided by cosine. So, again, um, for different right triangles, you should be able to be given two of these, A, B, C, or theta, and be able to find the other two. All right, let's do some examples right here. Oh, before we do that, though, here's some important right triangles that you should know about. The isosceles right triangle has two 45 degree angles. Um, you know, of course, if you do the Pythagorean theorem, you find out that the hypotenuse is the square root of two times each of the lengths sides. Okay? Basically, here, c squared is equal to uh, a squared plus a squared, which is 2a squared. You take the square root of both sides, and you get that c is equal to a times the square root of two. Here's a 30-60 degree triangle. Uh, this is very important because if you look at the relationships right here, the opposite side, okay, is equal to one half the hypotenuse side. And of course, the other side goes by the um, square root of three times the opposite side. So this is a, a very convenient uh, triangle to use. Another one is the 3-4-5 triangle, where you look at the ratio of the sides. 
uh, this is three to this four to this five. They're not, you know, memorizing these angles is a little bit difficult. 37 and 53 are approximately the angles right there. If you take it to a higher degree of precision, uh, I think they might go uh, repeating, in, uh, not repeating, but go uh, out indefinitely. Um, so these are the three big triangles that you should be aware of in, in terms of right triangles. Um, there's also uh, this triangle right here at 26.5 degrees. The opposite side is one half the length of the adjacent side. And um, right here you have the opposite uh, being uh, three times the adjacent side. There are also some other similar ones to the 3-4-5 triangle, but um, we come across those uh, much less um, frequently where the ratios of the sides are all integers. can't think of one off the top of my head, but um, we'll certainly come across them from time to time. Okay, using your calculator, how do I calculate the two unknowns if I know the known? Well, in this case, we are going to calculate A, which is unknown, knowing the hypotenuse, and knowing the angle. Okay, we're going to use that 3, 4, 5 triangle just to sort of demonstrate this. So C, the hypotenuse, is 15. Sine theta is A over C. We want to solve for A. So algebraically, we just multiply both sides by C. So A is equal to C times sine theta. We take the sine of 53.1 degrees. We find out that it's 0 0.8. 0 0.8 times 15, okay, gives me 12. Do the same thing with cosine. Let's say that we want to find B this time, knowing C and theta. Okay, same initial, you know, same, you know, known quantities. Uh, we found A. Now we're going to find B using cosine theta. Again, we solve for that unknown. Put it on the left-hand side by itself. B is equal to C cosine theta. The cosine of 53.1 degrees is 0 0.6. 0 0.6 times 5 gives me 9. Okay, so there's an application using sine and cosine. What about using tangent? Well, tangent is actually most useful not so much when we're trying to find A, B, or C. Actually, they only relate to A and B. Tangent is most useful when we're trying to find the angle. And we don't actually use tangent as much as we use inverse tangent. Let's say here we know A and we know B. Okay? Here, we're going to use the inverse tangent to find the angle by applying it right here. And that makes theta equal to the inverse tangent of A over B. All right? So A over B, 4 divided by 8, is 1 half. The inverse tangent of 1 half, if I have my calculator set to degrees, becomes 26.5 degrees. Pythagorean theorem, this one's an easy one. If you know two of the sides, you can find the other side. Here we're solving for C. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Put C by itself, take the square root of both sides, and we can find out C. So again, you should know how to do this for, for different cases. For this particular case, without going into these um, in excruciating detail, here instead of uh, knowing uh, the hypotenuse and the angle, we actually know the opposite side and the angle. Solve for C here. You can follow the algebra. You can find that on them. So sine, cosine, sort of the same thing, finding uh, C here. Um, and tangent, sine, cosine, tangent, and the Pythagorean theorem are really helpful for, for finding the, the properties of, of a right triangle. We're going to use them in Cartesian coordinates especially, especially finding the x and y components. And what we find is, if we change our labels a little bit, where x becomes, in this case, the adjacent side, y becomes the opposite side, and the hypotenuse becomes r. These are actually plain, r and theta are actually plain polar coordinates, x and y are actually Cartesian coordinates. We can convert from one system to another simply using these equations.
Here's an example right here. I want to find out the height of this fountain. I know the radius of the base is 5 meters. I know the angle that I cite from the edge to the top of the fountain is 55 degrees. Okay? How do I find the height? Well, tangent theta is equal to the opposite divided by the adjacent. I know the adjacent, I know the angle, I don't know the opposite. So I solve for y. y is equal to x times tangent theta. x is equal to 5 meters. The angle is 55 degrees. The tangent of 55 degrees is 1.43. I get 7.1 meters. Here's another case. Again, replacing A, B, and C with X, Y, and R. Here's the Pythagorean theorem written instead of A squared plus B squared equals C squared. X squared plus Y squared equals R squared. We solve for Y, the distance. Okay? And Y is just the equivalent to the opposite side. We can find that distance given the other two distances. Okay.